All right, guys, we're back right away. We're, we're back right away. RTK, 100 kanji a day. RTK in 22 days. How did I do it? Why did I do it? All right, so I decided that I would be studying, you know, kanji as, you know, in the summer. And where did I get the idea that 100 kanji a day was even possible? I, I, I'm ashamed to say, at that time, the, you know, resources were not entirely they were not entirely dependable reliable I don't know what you'd like to say one moment I need some water it's, shoot, it's getting steamy hot out here guys so anyways so I was on the kanji kuhi forums at that time and there was just a lot of talk about what kind of you know how many kinds you could do a day and um, and just what was overall possible. I, you know, I saw other people talking about doing 100 kanji a day. I don't think any of those people actually did end up doing that. I've never heard of anyone else who did 100 kanji a day, but I legitimately did. And look, lucky for me, I, I was always interested in the concept of time boxing and I had read widely about doing that before I had um, actually started even doing uh, RTK. So I had always planned on using the concept of time boxing. Doing, and if you guys aren't familiar with time boxing, I would, I'm gonna, you know, s briefly explain it. But I would, I would uh, hope that you guys would look it up and look into the details of how you would, you may want to time it. And because as you get better at it, you're able to do it. You know, you're able to more freely use it because you're, 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 you know, you kind of become used to working in spurts, you know, studying in spurts or whatever it might be. So anyways guys, basically time boxing is the idea that you'll do something you enjoy for a certain period of time and then you'll do, you know, your work for a certain period of time. And the whole idea is that, you know, as every, I, as I think most people know, you know, the um, ultimate amount of time in a day that one can do intellectual work or work that's, you know, you know somewhat straining to the brain is limited and I'd say it's very limited but I don't even know if there's studies I don't remember what I read about time boxing then but I will say from experience that it seems that if one time boxes that amount of work just the overall workload that one can do in a day is increased so you you for a given amount of time and shorter time periods are better I would usually work from periods as short of as you know 30 seconds even from up to at the most five minutes but I would usually work between a one minute to two minute interval and yeah it's it's a weird way to do things and I I'm so glad that I don't live my life like that anymore to be honest however I would say that it, it is really deadly effective you know you you do something you enjoy, maybe watch a program, play a video game so video games that are you know able to be paused or that can be played in short spurts are ideal for this sort of thing. And what you would do, do something you enjoy and then do the study for a short period of time. I don't remember the exact time frames I used when I was studying RTK, but I remember that I always did favor short time periods for time boxing. So, so um, you know, summer break arrived in 2009 and it was time to get going. I, I believe that I started the very next day perhaps I took a weekend off I forget exactly because you know guys it's nearly 10 years ago so you know what I did is from the very beginning I applied the principles of of time boxing I started I would um, I would always read the RTK book first I would read the RTK book and then later I met oh this is actually a really funny thing guys I actually started with memorize and different SRS's before I found Anki so I got about maybe one-third of the way through through maybe no it wasn't one-third maybe I got a few days into it and then I had to restart and then I ended up doing like 300 kanji in one day I forgot about that when I found Anki and I was like wow Anki is way better so I ended up using Anki but let's not even touch that because that's not important because you guys know about Anki you can use it from the beginning so 
so yeah, it, it did leave me with tons of reviews in Anki. Like, it, it was kind of awful. I do remember that. I just remember that. So, um, how did I do it? So I would read the RTK book, look into, you know, the stories that, because he gives you stories, if I remember correctly, for the first few kanji. You use those stories, and then you, um, you, you know, memorize the kanji. I very quickly realized that his stories were you know not for me so I very quickly started just naming uh, I just named all of the radicals what I wanted to call them I you know at that time I was actually an avid reader I read uh, Sam Harris Richard Dawkins Brian Greene I read a lot of science books at that time and I remember that all of those three you know those three authors that I just mentioned they were all in my uh, they were all radical names, and it was very funny. Some of the stories were very vulgar and very interesting indeed that I would make. But another interesting point uh, that needs to be made is I didn't even put my stories on my on my cards. My cards would just um, be the you know the keyword on the front, and then I would write the kanji on the back, and the kanji was written on the back. To be honest, I didn't even have the stroke order. I would memorize the stroke order. I didn't even put a stroke order chart. This is, you know, 2009. Oh, you guys are spoiled now. Like, there's a lot of more understanding. Because I had just started using Anki. I didn't really know how to customize it very well. So I just used the front and the back. I remember that distinctly. I just used the front and the back uh, fields. I didn't know how to customize. Later, I, not, uh, I learned how to customize it very well. But, um, and now, you know, I consider myself, well, I'm obviously, you know, coding plug you know add on so I consider myself pretty familiar with the with the um, source code but before that I, I, I was I was nowhere near as familiar then uh, on how Anki worked so I just used the front and the back fields I put the kanji on the front or I put the kanji on the back the keyword on the front the kanji was just a picture blown up and I you know I changed the font size to like 150 or something and that's how I studied guys and whenever I had a question as to um, what the, you know, what the stroke order was, I would just look it back up in the book, or I would look it up online or something. I would, I would well, usually I would look it up online because it's way easier to just copy and paste, you know, that character online than look it up in the book. But which is a funny thing. I think that if anything, that led me whenever I didn't have any confidence, or I, whenever I had any lack of confidence, I should say, in the stroke order, I would just look it up. So that really led me to be um, better at stroke order. Although I've kind of lost a lot of that stroke order ability over over the years. I'm not 100%. I'm very close to, you know, I'm 95 plus percent probably. But here and there, I probably make some stroke order mistakes. I don't consider it to be a big issue. Um, so anyways, guys, yeah, I just pretty much had the keyword on the front and the kanji on the back. Later, as I mentioned, I would go on to, um, you know, add Japanese to it as I started learning Japanese you know, the actual Japanese vocabulary and things, I would add it to the kanji that I already knew that were, um, were you know, when they had words that I already knew in which they were, you know, they were used. So, so basically, when you ask me how I did 100 kanji a day, I would study, f oh yeah, and another, another key thing is you, I would just do five at a time. I would do five kanji in the book. You know, there was, you know, I would do time boxing, then five kanji in a book, make a story in my head. Then I would go back to doing something fun. Then I would put those kanji into Anki and study them in Anki. And I would just do that all day pretty much. <laughs> That's how it works. You do it all day or until it's done. You do it until it's done. And you just time box. A little fun kanji, a little fun kanji all day. And you'd be surprised what you can achieve with that. Now, if we want to talk about the kinds of results that I had, or, or you know, or what I put myself through to do this, I remember distinctly being over a thousand reviews a day at times during that period of time. It was an insane thing, and that's where I would, um, you know, that's where time box. The only reason I was able to do that, mind you, it took me all day, is through time boxing, and. I would time box for a certain period of time. However many cards I finished within that period of time would be how many cards I finished, how many cards I reviewed, right? And I would just go until it was done. And 
another key aspect here is that I would always study the new kanji first. I would review after I was done with the new kanji. That way I assured that I kept myself on a hundred kanji a day, um, you know, pace. But another key key issue here is to remember that um, what was I gonna say? My accurate, like my levels of what was it? What's it called? The retention rate, right? My retention rate was nowhere near the suggested ninety percent, guys. I was failing cards often. I remember um, I showed my stats to Matt, and at that time. You know, I still have the stats from all the way back. Or I had the stats from all the way back then. But luckily, I will share at the end at the end of Japan, the, the Japanese series. I will share my Anki stats and um, you know other information about that. Once we're done just having a chat, I'll I'll go into that information because luckily it's saved on Discord. So my accuracy was far from that ninety percent. I didn't even know that that was something we were aiming for. Then you know, I was I was very new to using Anki and using SRS's effectively. And I made, mind you, I made countless mistakes after that as well. So, um, I'm just making sure it's recording, better be. <laughs> so anyways, I made a lot of mistakes and my retention rate was far from ideal, but I would just, I just didn't, <laughs> you know, how I was able to do it, it's just, I was, I don't know. I don't know if you'd like to call me a monster or a zombie or a robot, but pretty much I just acted autom autonomously. I didn't really think and I just kept plugging away. It was, you know, a period of time that wasn't particularly enjoyable in my life, I'd say. But but um, it was fruitful at the end. And like I said, I was aiming for originally 100 kanji a day. I believe the, the version of RTK1 that I did was 2,046 2, characters. Or something, 2,040 some characters. So, I should have taken 21 days, but I took 22 days because I remember distinctly that there was a, um, a day in there that I didn't finish my reviews. I, it just wasn't possible. I was also working at the time, by the way, guys. I was working luckily part-time for the census, so I would just go around for like three hours a day um, um, just verifying addresses. So it was pretty It was pretty easy, and I was able to uh, get that work done very quickly throughout the day while I, you know, and if I remember correctly, I would, um, you know, I was actually reading RTK while I did those walks and things as well. But I, I didn't consider that part of my studying. My, I would restudy everything that I did during that time um, when I actually got home. And I didn't work every day. It was probably only like three or four days a week, if that. So guys, um, so what was I to say? Oh, what about my retention rates after, right? I think my retention rates and then my review the amount of reviews that I had didn't drop off for for quite a substantial period of time and and my retention rates weren't that high if I remember correctly around 80% even as low as 75% so it's three and four kanji but I figured that three and four kanji when you're doing 2020 days is not that bad because the ones that fall through the cracks you're, you're going to pick back up anyways Although it does lead to a lot of, you know, review time spent in Anki, but I was, I was quite a, I was a lot more determined and, um, what should I say, I was a lot more, I could, um, bear psychological torment then more than I can now. As I'm getting older, I realize I shouldn't do that so much because, you know, you never know, you never know when this is all going to end, so let's try to enjoy it a bit more. So I have that ability now. So guys, we should we should always remember that we we, we don't want to um, put ourselves to too, through too much torment because you know this it you know this life carries an indefinite time frame with it. So so guys, and then like I said before in the video, why I didn't have too much issue is because as soon as I finished RTK, I went on to start studying, um, I believe I did the Kanji Odyssey deck, and I'll talk about that, you know, where I went after RTK in my next video. But, um, how much time do I have left here, guys? Oh, uh, five minutes, we're good. So, I'll talk about that in my next video, but, 
So I went on and did um, the Kanji Odyssey deck and I remember that I did have some issues with going straight from keyboard to to Kanji but those were fixed very very quickly by just by simply just adding uh, the Japanese that I was learning through Kanji Odyssey and in other uh, you know I well, I think I just did Kanji Odyssey at first, but later I would uh, start mining and then I would add that Japanese to those cards as well. And then as I added it, it became very, very easy to uh, keep up, you know, keep up with, uh, what should I say, keep up with the reviews and just keep a decent uh, retention rate. Keep a decent retention rate. And I was able to do that through just applying the knowledge of the Japanese that I was learning and uh you know putting that knowledge into the rtk deck which kept the retention rates uh relatively high so i was able to do 100 kanji a day and get out with a decent result and at my peak like i said before I, i'd write kanji jukugo chinese um and then at my peak writing japanese as well you know I would say at least well i could write how about this i could write better than my wife my wife had been living abroad for a while so she wasn't the best kanji writer out there, but I could write better than my wife, and I could definitely write a lot more rare kanji than my wife ever could, but that's that's fine, because that's just a parlor trick at the end of the day, guys. It's not something that's actually useful, um, and it's it's really just a wasted effort to put your energy into doing that, or not, not, not wasted effort. It depends on your level of interest in it, right? If your level of interest is high enough, then it's fine to do that, but I, I think I kind of just did it to show other people, which was kind of stupid, although I did... Uh, gained a skill which was kind of cool as well um so why shouldn't you guys do this because i if i remember correctly i did put myself through a lot of psychological torment during that time just getting through that you know and then i felt like great guilt you know if the one day i think only one day i didn't actually finish it but i, I felt great guilt and i just remember um just if you're in this for the long run to study the language, then what's it matter if you do it in a month or three months? You know, actually it does matter. If you do it in a month, there's a lot of psychological pain that you can feel. And if you do it in three months, that pain is, is just, you know, greatly averted. So there's no reason to rush, guys. Um, enjoy the process. It's gonna take a long time anyways. This is a big theme that I had in my uh, when should we study kanji video as well. If you're going to do RTK, don't rush it. No need to, you'll get there. If you continue with the immer immersion, if you continue with the, um, you know, continue going MIA, the, you know, mass, the mass immersion approach will just lead you to great results. No need to rush it. No need to do 100 kanji a day. You know, I did that. And I learned the lessons involved so you guys wouldn't have to. Cheers, guys.